Hi, today's video has to do with a much maligned and misused piece of equipment that can be found in many garages and shops all over the place. The bench grinder, or as in this case, seen as it's on a pedestal, the pedestal grinder. Let's start by talking about safety. First and foremost, the eye shield, or the face guard, on these machines. They're easily removed, but don't remove them. Leave them in place and position them properly. It should be situated between the face of the person using the machine and the grinding wheel that's doing the cutting. Another important part of the pedestal grinder that's often abused and not used properly is the support. The support is there to stabilize the workpiece and permit you to grind effectively. It's very important to leave the support in place. But even more important is to have it positioned very close to the work wheel. There should be almost no gap present between the support and the wheel. Now remember, when you sharpen the wheel, or when you wear it down, that space is going to get larger. Very dangerous. So keep it quite tight, just barely rubbing on the wheel. Another important safety feature are the cowlings, or the covers, that surround the grinding wheel. Do not remove them. You only need access, at most, to a third of the grinding wheel. So leave them in place. They're there for your safety. The only time you'll want to remove them is when you're doing maintenance or replacing the grinding wheel. Since I just mentioned maintenance, it's important to know that if you're going to do maintenance on a machine like this or on any other type of machine tool, you have to make sure that the power is turned off. For a machine like this, obviously, you're going to turn the main switch off. But you're also going to use a lockout switch. A switch that can be locked with a padlock. In order to ensure that the machine cannot be turned on by someone else while you're working on it. This is very important. Never do maintenance on a machine that has only a closed breaker in some other room turned off. Someone could turn it on while you're working on it. Obviously, if you're not working in an industrial setting and your machine isn't hardwired into the electrical circuit, well, you can dispense with the second lockout switch by just unplugging the machine. So make sure that you can't plug it in easily. Put a piece of tape around the plug just to make sure that someone can't just plug it in while you're working. Obviously, if you're going to work on a grinder such as this for a long period of time, you're going to want a good dust recovery system. Now, if you don't have one, make sure that you wear a mask to filter out those fine particles. Now we can talk about the grinding wheel itself. In our case, we're using aluminum oxide grinding wheels with a medium-sized grit. Remember, grinding wheels come in different abrasive sizes. So you could have a fine, medium, coarse grit wheel, and it works about the same way as sandpaper or emery cloth. If you want a rough finish or want to take a lot of material off quickly, use a large grain wheel. If you're looking for finer finishes and aren't worried about speed, well, use a finer grain wheel. You'll note on the grinding wheel that we have two blotters, one on each side. These blotters are very important. First off, they protect the grinding wheel from the flanges that we're going to use to mount the wheel onto the shaft. Secondly, they indicate important features of the grinding wheel, most important of which is the maximum RPM. In this case, 3,250 revolutions per minute. Make sure that your machine does not run at a higher speed than is indicated on this abrasive wheel. The center mounting hole on the grinding wheel should fit loosely on the shaft, 
but not very loosely. We want ten thousandths of an inch at most of play between the two. Now, it's important not to force the wheel onto the shaft, but it is possible that the wheel that you're using has a hole quite a bit larger than the shaft that you want to mount it on. In that case, you can use reduction bushings to adjust the size of the hole to the machine you're using. Now, the last thing you're going to want to do to your grinding wheel before you mount it on the shaft of your grinder is to ring test it to make sure that it's not cracked. These abrasive wheels are vitrified wheels, which means that they can crack easily. They're quite delicate. So, to make sure that it's not cracked and to avoid an accident, you're going to ring test it. And to do that, hold it on a screwdriver and then lightly tap it with the plastic or hardwood handle of another screwdriver. If the ring is crisp and clear, it's probably not cracked and it's okay to mount it onto there. If the ring, however, is dull and muffled, don't put it on the machine. Discard it, bring it back to your retailer, do what you want, but do not put it on the machine. A cracked wheel is excessively dangerous to use. One last thing before we move on to removing the old wheel or installing the new wheel is to remember that one end of the drive shaft of your machine has a left hand screw thread on it and the other end has a right hand screw thread on it. So don't go wasting your time trying to take off this screw by turning in the normal fashion. Remember, it's a left-handed screw thread. Now, I'm not going to go through the installation process for the grinding wheel on this grinder because each manufacturer makes their machines slightly different. So it would be best for you to refer to the instruction booklet that came with your machine to find out exactly how to remove and reinstall a new wheel. For us, we're going to come back to our movie at the point where we're going to have to true up and dress our wheel. Truing and dressing a grinding wheel is very important and it's something that few people do. It's not surprising that they aren't getting good performance from their machine. When you install a new grinding wheel on a pedestal grinder, it's not certain that the grinding wheel is perfectly round. And even if it was perfectly round, when you install it on the shaft, there is a slight clearance between the hole on the wheel and the outside diameter of the shaft, which means that once installed, the grinding wheel is probably going to describe a slightly eccentric movement. To correct that, we're going to true up the wheel. Now, truing a wheel is very important because to work properly, the outside diameter of a grinding wheel has to be concentric to the shaft that it's riding on. To true up the wheel, I'm going to use a cutting tool. I've chosen a single point diamond cutting tool here, which is generally used to true up wheels on cylindrical and surface grinders. So I'm going to have to control the movement of this cutting tool. So I've mounted it into a lathe tool holder. Now this lathe tool holder is going to stabilize the part so that I can work accurately and really true up the wheel properly. But for that I'm going to have to make sure, and I have made sure, that the top surface of my rest is in good condition and that the outer edge of my rest is flat and true. So let's go ahead and true up the wheel. Now that you've trued up the wheel, you're ready for cutting. But as you cut, your grinding wheel is going to wear. Now if you don't abuse the grinding wheel and work properly, not pushing your workpiece too hard into the wheel, well your wheel will stay true, but it is going to get dull and it is going to get packed with metal particles. So you're going to want to sharpen it every now and then. How often depends on how you work. 
To resharpen your grinding wheel, you can use the diamond tip that we just used, but faster and easier would be to use a Desmond dresser. You cannot true up a wheel with a Desmond dresser, but it will sharpen your grinding wheel. A Desmond dresser consists of a shaft on which are mounted several small circular discs that have teeth on them. And we're going to force these discs into the surface of the grinding wheel to chip away small parts and to present new abrasive grains. It is important when you use the Desmond dresser that you apply enough force so there is no sparking. We don't want the grinding wheel to grind the dresser. We want the dresser to chip away at the grinding wheel. So it has to be turning at the same surface speed as the wheel is. To use the Desmond dresser properly, we have to force it onto the surface of the wheel. Now, we don't want to gouge or dig into the wheel, so we're going to force it into the wheel and keep the dresser in constant movement. We're going to move constantly and just take enough off to bring the wheel back to its sharpened state. You don't want to take a lot off here. That's it. That's all we need to do to sharpen the wheel. A few little suggestions for the proper use of a bench grinder. Always make sure that your tool rest is well positioned and tight up against the wheel. You don't want it to touch the wheel, but you want a minimum gap. Always use your tool rest to support your part. It stabilizes the piece you're working on and greatly reduces the risk of accident. Mount a coarse grained aluminum oxide wheel on one end of the grinder and a medium to fine grained wheel on the other end. That way you can rough and finish on the same machine. Never use the sides of a grinding wheel to grind your part. Only the exterior diameter of the wheel should be used for grinding. As a general rule, only ferrous metals should be ground on a pedestal grinder. Another way of looking at it would be to say, if it doesn't make sparks, you shouldn't grind it on this tool. Keep your safety glasses on, keep your fingers away from the work wheel, and always work safely. One last thing. There's no need to push the workpiece with force into the wheel. Grinding wheels cut better and last longer if light pressures are used. So go at it delicately. You'll get better results. Happy grinding!